Now, since we're talking about primitives, um, we're going to talk um, specifically about how to model with planes and um, take a look at some of the, the tricks and, uh, and, and some of the, the little um, really, really modeling workflows that we've, we've worked out uh, having used T-splints for a while um, that, you know, without a course like this, it can be kind of a cumbersome task to kind of learn <laughs> on your own. Um, but we're going to, you know, we've designed all the exercises to really reveal um, a lot of these uh, uh, peculiarities to you and, and, and help iron out the workflow. So, you know, after the course uh, concludes, um, you should be able to be up and running um, uh, in your own work. So before I start getting into uh, T-splines, uh, specifically from planes, um, I'd like to take a moment to address any questions you may have about the display mode, for instance, box versus smooth. Um, you know, creating a T-splines primitive, we looked at boxes, we looked at the quad ball, uh, I think we added in a sphere as well as a plane. So if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to post to the uh, question window and um, you know, and if it's something that uh, you think is uh, really broad and uh, gener general, um, definitely post it and I'll address it to the group. And if it's technical, um, then Gil will uh, uh, reply to you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Now, seems like everybody's doing all right. Uh, so since, since that's the case, let's go ahead and move on. Um, now, with a T-splines plane, You'll notice that the plane has settings for face count. Now that's what we were looking at in the um, command line. Now a T-spline plane with a face count equal to two, you'll see that we have two columns and two rows. Here we have three and three and then five and five. Now as we've increased the face count, we've increased the amount of uh, computing that this particular piece of geometry can uh, undertake. Now, Although there's more data here, right? There's more um, kind of underlying uh, uh, logic or structure to the geometry. Um, one thing that is consistent are what the parts are. And if you notice, we have edges, we have faces, and um, and then we have vertices. So we touched on this earlier about T splines um, and the types of points that they have. Now, when we talk about a primitive, right? Here we have um, a primitive plane and the point type here, the number of intersections uh, that you have. So at that point we have two intersections, these two edges. And because of that, uh, the T point type is a control point and its behavior will be uh, sharp. It will maintain a sharp corner. Now. If we uh, take a look at this primitive here, and it has additional faces or subdivisions, uh, columns and rows, you'll see that now we have an interior um, uh, point right here, uh, these being uh, boundary points. Now here, the number of intersections, if you notice, we have two at the corner. Um, along the edge, we have three because we have this uh, terminating here into a T. And here at the um, center, uh, we have four. We have four edges that are coming together. But because of that, uh, the way that this is structured, these still all operate um, as control points. Um, this here will have a, a smooth interpolation across this, but because the corner is sharp, you're not really going to see a lot of change. And so what we're going to be um, trying to figure out and you know, work through today is how do you get from something that um, is seemingly you know, kind of fixed to a boundary to begin to articulate it so you can work with it as an organic uh, kind of freeform continuous surface. Um, so we'll come back to this slide in just a moment. So let's go over here to Rhino and in top view, I'm going to create a primitive plane. Now, if you notice, um, I left my primitives uh, pull out uh, or tear out um, open here, and I'm actually going to just close my create toolbar because I'm just going to be working with primitives and, and kind of modifying them here. 
Now, you can get to this plane object from either here or going to teased lines primitives um, plane. I'm going to use my toolbar. And I'm going to say x faces equals 2, y faces equals 2, and just drag this guy out. I'll say 8 inches. Now, when this happens, you'll see that the T-splines object has this dark black boundary. Interior, it has this lighter um, uh, edge lines right here. In wireframe, uh, unless it's selected, or you have, make sure my ISO curves are on, uh, your ISO curve display on, uh, you won't see that. All right. Now let's go ahead and do that uh, two more times. And I'm going to increase my face count each time. And so now I have two by two and I have three by three. So I'll make it five by five. All right. Now, if we were to take this object here, um, and let's just, I don't know, let's copy all these guys up so we can keep track of what's going on and updates, kind of see the original. If I select my smooth toggle and I start smooth toggling these objects, you're not going to see any change. Right? And this really goes back to what we were talking about a moment ago, that because we have the two edges here meeting at the corner, um, this is not able to smooth um, around that corner. So you're not really going to see any change. So let's copy these guys up. Now, when you start with a primitive, the next thing that you typically need to do is try to determine a little bit about um, how you can interface with that object. Now, with the T-splines, we have seen that you do have something called an edit mode, right? We had the ability to select at a vertex, a face, or an edge level. Um, but we got to that by activating first the extrude. Now, there is something called edit mode in T-splines. And if we enable that, you'll see that down here, that same um, window pops open and gives you access to the different ways that you can select T-splines um, elements. Now here you can see if I'm on object mode, so if I select this, you'll see that the T-splines widget pops up. Now, one thing you'll notice is that in Rhino 5, if you have your gumball on, that will be sitting underneath the T-splines gumball. So you may want to make sure that you, you turn that off so it's not interfering with the viewport. Now, if I move this object up, right, or down, you can see that it's moving it at the object level. If I select a face and move it up or down, it's doing it at the face level. Because this is implemented in Rhino, um, Rhino's an extremely precise tool, you also can carry that precision over by double clicking uh, one of these arrows to designate that you'd like to move, let's say, one unit in um, the Z direction, maybe four units in Z, right? So take a moment to explore what happens when you start to move the faces of these different density T-splines. You'll see that this is going to ultimately affect how far along that surface you're going to see um, the influence of what you did. Now you have faces. Remember, you have edges, so you can actually select an edge if you prefer to work that way. Um, let's say, for instance, I wanted to move this edge up. Or 
or for instance, if I move this edge, right? If I chose one of these edges, right? Or holding down shift, you can actually select more than one edge at a time. And then you have your vertices. So turning on a vertex, you can move, for instance, right, just a corner up. And you're able to move a vertex out. Right, you can see here that this affects the the edge, right, locally at the point level, at the vertex level. Right, so depending upon what kind of control you're looking for, uh, once you have your primitive in place, um, you need to you know determine whether or not you should be operating at the face level of the edge or the vertex level. Now, that's not exactly just a one-way street because sometimes whenever you start to think about um, where you want to end up, you have to come up with a clear strategy for how to get there. So how should you actually begin working with the primitive, what type of primitive you want to work with, et cetera. So we're going to show you a few different ways today. Now, in order to arrive at a smooth edge, it's not that we need more faces, right? Because if you notice, whenever we um, added more faces here, right, we still did not get a smooth object. So let's just copy this guy up now and take a look. But really what we need to do is create interior um, offsets. Now when we take a look at this in top view, uh, it's a little bit easier to, to see. So selecting this T-spline surface, I'm going to select the button that says Extrude Faces. I'm going to select all of these faces here and hit Enter. Now, Using the other modifier here, if you notice there is a modifier for scale, I was able to, using the gray box in the center here, scale those faces in. If we look at that in uh, perspective view, you can see that what has happened now is that it's essentially offset the faces in, right, providing now here um, a different junction. Now if we convert to smooth now, you'll see that the geometry is able to interpolate right here at the corner because it now has the additional um, uh, T point, uh, which is here. This would be actually an, a star point, I believe. Let me take a look. Okay, so actually this because it only has um, three edges coming together would still be considered uh, a control point. Now you can see that um, by going into uh, the smooth mode uh, that this will actually smooth out the, the edges nicely. Now if we repeat that command, I'm just going to select all these guys now and uh, I'm going to run extrude again. I'm using my scale modifier here and just scale these guys in. I can then smooth this and you'll see that that's going to smooth as well. Now, let's try that one more time. We're using our scale modifier. We're just scaling this guy in. We convert, or actually you know, go to smooth toggle, I guess you could say. 
and you'll see that you now have here, right, smooth objects. 